Hello everyone and welcome to Canada CPA Online Academy. Uh, welcome to all the new members, all the new subscribers. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, joining this channel. And please uh, keep giving your suggestions. I'm getting different comments and uh, suggestions to make videos on the topic. So if you have something you are struggling with and you need uh, a, a guidance on a topic, please let me know in the comments. And um, today we are going to discuss about how to integrate the situation analysis in your day one case. So in the previous uh, video series on day one, we have seen how to uh, approach the case writing, what is expected for day one. So please feel free to check the previous videos in the day one series. Here we are diving deep uh, in the situational analysis integration part. So it is, it is very important to clear day one to integrate your facts um, from a situational analysis into your answer. So today we are going to see how to do that. And before we move on, please, please like and share this channel. Please subscribe to the channel. Please let your know, friends know about this channel. And every, every like, share, subscribe helps me uh, to, to keep, keep doing more and to help you more. So please, please share it with your friends and, and your community of CPAs. Um, Okay, so let's see what is integration that we are talking about. Now, um, see there, there would be, uh, what I can say, um, like some facts that would be given in your uh, situational analysis and uh, or, or in, the, in the discussion of the case, it starts. So you write the situational analysis first now, in your when you're writing the strategic um, options or you're writing the operational issues, you will have to bring those facts back into the case answer. So, how do you do that? So, I'm I'm giving you some specific examples based on uh, this is based on the uh, distinct hotel case that was tested last year. So, uh, see the first example. In the situational analysis, if you have written that the goal or the objective of the company is ROI 10% or above, they require some cash for the future strategic investments and the borrowing capacity has reached its maximum. Now, uh, now take a take a pause and think about it. So borrowing capacity has reached its maximum. So you don't have cash to uh, invest into something else. So what they have to do is they can't go and borrow a new loan. So what they have to do is they will have to circulate the existing funds or sell something, make the cash available and uh, invest in uh, something new. And that new investment should have an ROI of 10%. Now keep this at the back of the of your mind as you're analyzing your strategic options, okay? Now there was a strategic option two that was given. <clears throat> it says, um, the more sale of Montreal property uh, or to continue uh, develop this property. So there was an option, there was some problem going on with that development. So either you have to sell that property or you can continue develop that property and it will generate future ROI. So um, you do the quantitative analysis based on all the facts, you calculate the NPV. Now you arrive at a conclusion that the NPV with the revised all the estimated costs and the changes in the cash flows, it's negative and the IRR is also negative. So it does not fit with the strategic objective of ROI. So that is how you are linking it back. So you used the specific case facts to uh, complete your quantitative analysis for this option. You arrived, you calculated the NPV. Now the integration part comes is you're linking that, okay, this, this uh, NPV is not tying back to your goal or objective that you mentioned in situational analysis and that is the 10% ROI. So that is, that is counted as your integration. Now always target to have at least two to three integrations uh, in each option. Now the second integration part was when you sell that, it is going to add this much cash uh, after the sale of this property and uh, af after paying off the existing mortgage on that property. So that means this cash now becomes available for 
the future investments now so in in another option that might they might have given some um other option to invest in so this is how you are tying it back okay so the borrowing capacity is not there so you need cash so this cash by the sale of this property can be utilized into another uh, investment so that is that is how you are tying it back okay now see um, another example in the now there there was um, if you you will have to know the case in detail but just uh, a few facts on that is there were two uh, founding members of of the of the company dhc and allison and kelvin and they have uh, decided to retire now this severely impacts uh, the company because they have been very strong uh, in 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 the growth and the profitability and kelvin was an architect who used to look after the unique designs and management of all the properties construction so it he had he played a very important role similarly allison was managing all the hotels and um, customer service and that so there are two uh, significant board members that are leaving now it impacts uh, the company now when they are leaving the strategic option that is given uh, with this uh, with this with this uh, situation is that their shares would be sold to a different investment fund now what you have to now change of ownership is always tricky because um, see the vision mission of the company should be aligned with the new owners as well now this is an investment fund so how you can look for the integration is that um are the experience like these are the two active experience members that are leaving so is the new member ha is having any experience in the hotel industry so you can quote the integration that they do not have experience in the hotel industry which is given in the case uh, it it affects dhc as uh, they would need an immediate replacement of the experienced team members like allison and kelvin those they were with the company for 10 15 years and um, another another point was if it's an investment fund so what their strategic objective would be to get the um, roi or to get uh, the profits back to earn the cash and uh, the other two partners they want to keep the funds in the company and reinvest it into so there is a clash of objectives so whether it will be uh from the future perspective whether it is a good decision or not and then there will be quantitative analysis of what what the price of the share should be what is the valuation and things like that but from the integration point of view sometimes it is not just the quantitative part that makes sense or not like whether it makes sense uh, financially or not but it is more from the vision of uh, from the point of vision and mission and the long term impact of that decision as well so here is an example of integration how you can integrate whether the vision and mission that is important to dhc whether it will be carried forward or not and whether this would be a good strategic fit with the new investors or not so here is another example um we discussed about the montreal property uh one more example now um in your situational analysis uh, you you will have to write the key success factors so these are the key success factors on the left hand side you can see that keeping up to date with the technology anticipate customer needs using market research and retaining and attracting new customers so that is what you have uh, noted down in your situational analysis as your key success factors now there is an strategic option option number 3 which has like the dhc is thinking of offering loyalty programs to the hotel customers now in that option there are again multiple options of three options like whether they want to do uh, like the loyalty program management they do want to do in house or give it to someone else or join a pool of uh, loyalty program where they would just register and join that program so there there are again three options so when you are analyzing the options you are you are again thinking back to what you have written to situational analysis and what you can integrate into the factors now you have done your quantitative analysis which makes sense which option gives you lesser cost and maximum uh, benefit uh, of the loyalty program that that analysis for the three options you have done now when you come to discussing or integrating uh, the case facts see for the option 1 in the pro uh it states that okay uh 
it, you are going on um, what you can say a, a newer technology uh, for the loyalty programs and keeping up to date with the market trends. So you, it, it aligns with that. So you, you have to mention that, okay, this aligns with the KSF of being up to date with the technology and offering reward system as per the market trend. So you, you integrated that fact. Another KSF is to embrace new ideas and changes to ensure that we continuously strive toward perfection. So introduction of the reward point system would achieve uh, which would help to achieve that factor that okay they are keeping up with the market trend since all the hotel industry is now offering loyalty programs so they are also joining um the trend and up updating them themselves and uh like trying to achieve the customer needs and what they are they are required to so in so in option one pro you integrated now two kss in your answer now there was an option two. In the con side, um, it is you are integrating another factor. So it is available only for DHC properties. So the choice is limited. So based on the case facts, it, it is it is limiting of, uh, of uh, it is a limiting factor. Also, it is available only through DHC website. So only only regular DHC customers will be able to avail it. So it may not attract the new customers. So giving the loyalty programs only to the existing customers does not align with their KSF of attracting new customers. And so this does not align. So once you write all the points of um, uh, pros and cons and all the options, then in your conclusion, you can weigh in that which factor affects uh, more based on the qualitative and quantitative analysis of um, of the of the integration and then you can conclude based on that so um uh, hopefully this is helpful uh, because um there is a lot of talk going on about the integration but sometimes uh, when you're starting at the first it's not very clear like what is integration how to do it so uh, hopefully these few examples will help you to uh, understand what does it mean by integrating the factors. So first, go through um, the, the day one case, try practicing to write the situational analysis. And then once, once you write the case answers and then go back to the situational analysis and try to bring in the relevant case facts from the, um, from the from your situational analysis and that is what all the integration is all about um thank you for thank you for uh, joining in for today's video and uh, keep keep watching keep keep giving suggestions and give us a thumbs up and share it with your friends and see you until next time thank you